is Harold Little. Uh, born and raised in Washington, D.C., still there today. I attended uh, D.C. public schools, uh, started at, uh, of course, Orr Elementary. It's called Boone now, then um, Kramer Junior High. Um, then I went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts, graduated from UDC. I graduated in 1998. Sure, so I, I attended Duke Ellington School of the Arts up there in Northwest Washington, D.C. And uh, there were many talented uh, folks up there. I cannot remember everyone, but the people I, I do uh, is like Donnell Floyd, who went on to play for Red Wrestlings and Bobby Smoot from Chance Band. The Sweet Cherie was there. Leroy Scooter Teller, uh, Michelle Indigay Acello was there, um, uh, uh, Ross White, Silver Logan Sharp. I mean, so many, I, I could just go on and on, but I just can't remember everyone right now at, at, at this time. So, yeah. how did I get to Duke Ellington? This is a funny story. So, I went to, uh, to Kramer Junior High, which was a horrible school at that time, right, in Southeast Washington, D.C. All I did was fight all the time. Um, and they wanted some, some band members for the band. They came, you know, recruited. I started playing there, but I, I, I didn't like the school at all. So I, I was cutting class. I was just didn't want to be there. So my trumpet teacher at the time was Gilbert Brown, graduate from Howard University. He was our band leader, uh, teacher, and he had a, a field trip to go to Duke Ellington. Now at that time, I didn't know who Duke Ellington was. I'm like, Duke Ellington what? So. Just to get out of school that day, I signed up for the field trip. <laughs> and that's how I wound up at Duke. Um, uh, let's see, my first day there, they had a whole show, a, a variety show. And this guy, Wallace Roney, jazz trumpeter, man, just passed away from uh, COVID-19, man. But he was, he was showcasing. I said, this is where I want to be. I thought I heard him play and William Fluker. I was like, man, this is where I want to be at Duke Ellington. So I, I wound up there through a field trip uh, trying to get out of going to class at Kramer Junior High. That's, that's how I got there. That's how I wound up at Duke Ellington. I had to audition, of course, and uh, Gilbert Brown had all of us trumpet players on, um, on, on point. So getting into Duke Ellington, I didn't know anything about it, though. So I came to the audition. They said, play your scales. I played my scales and, you know, I had to have decent grades, um, uh, but yeah, that's how I got up there from a field trip. Wow, my first introduction to go-go music was by way of a band called Mass Extension. Now, I was uh, maybe in the seventh grade at that time, and they came over to, to Southeast, I think they were at, yeah, at Kramer Junior High, in the gym. Mass Extension, I just, they just blew my mind. I'm like, wow, this is music right here. It's hot. I didn't know what it was called, but uh, they used to tear that tear that gym up. It'd be packed. It was only like three dollars to get in or something like that. But uh, I started listening to Mass Extension. Couldn't nobody in, in my mind. I I never heard of Red Asses or or Trouble Funk. I knew about Chuck Brown because of my mom, but I didn't associate Chuck Brown with Gogo at that time. And you know, being in the seventh grade, eighth grade, something like that. But man, I was like Mass Extension toward her. Every every time they came to Southeast, I was in the building when Mass Extension was playing. So that's, that band just blew me away. And I was like, whoa, man, what is this? I want to play this. This is what I want to do. Okay, so well, my introduction to playing Go-Go was by way of Mass Extension. So of course I wasn't good enough to play in Mass and plus they had two, two trumpet players that was outstanding. Uh, but there was a neighborhood band around my way in Southeast uh, called Chance Band. And they were pretty good. And I was like, well, shoot, I want to play go-go, so I want to audition for Chance Band. Now, at the time, I was in the seventh grade, and I was just picking up the trumpet. And it wasn't that, that, that experience. So I auditioned. I didn't make it. I cried. Uh, Troy Marshall, the music director at that time, who actually played drums, he was the drummer for the band, um, walked me home, talked to my mother, said, Miss Little, he just ain't ready. Little Harold, you just practice and you come back next year. And that's exactly what I did. I practiced and practiced so that I can make this chance band, right? So now I'm in the eighth grade and they got a trumpet player there, right? Uh, but I'm still auditioning. 
and I made the band in the eighth grade, right? <laughs> and I was the main trumpet player since that that period. I, I was the main. Now, a couple of them come through trying to take my seat, but I was I was practicing too much. And plus, under Gilbert Brown, you know, Gilbert Brown had us tight. So, um, and then going to Duke Ellington, nobody was taking my seat. <laughs> so yeah, I made it in the Chance Band. Uh, eventually, I, I became the horn uh, leader for Chance Band, and I stayed with them all the way up till uh, like '85, somewhere around there. From uh, what time? From what year? From year? from I think this was this was either '79 or it was '80, but from '79 to '85 maybe, because I went away to school and all that, so I couldn't play with the band, but those were our, those were our, our, um, our good years playing with Chance Band, and we had so many, so many musicians that came through Chance Band, I guess we can talk about that later, but um, it, it was so many talented, that band was talented at every position, every position, Donnell Floyd was on sax, Bobby Smoot on, on um, bass, Troy started playing drums. He was an outstanding drummer. He was at Duke Ellington at that time, um, but he switched the keyboard so that he could control the band. Reggie Hardy on keys. Um, Joe Dye, who went and left to go with uh, Northeast yeah, Northeast Groovers. Um, uh, then uh, Boogie from Air Raid, Boogie left, and then came Bula. Oh, Lord have mercy, that boy was too mean with it. We had Rabbit. On, on the second mic and trombone. Uh, me, of, of course, um, who am I leaving out? I'm, I'm leaving out so many people, boy, they're gonna be mad at me when they see this. <laughs> um, let's see, saxophone, Donnell, and then later, Rick, uh, KO stopped through a couple of times. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Toddy from class tried to take my seat. <laughs> he couldn't take my seat, <laughs> but that's another story. He was a great player back then too. But yeah, man, Chance was a band that I, I wanted to be with, uh, and I, I, I set that as a, as a goal. I think because of my um, personality, Troy said, uh, practice and come back later, and that's what I did. My mother used to put me out front. So we lived in this one bedroom apartment, Hillside Terrace, and it was a courtyard. So this, this apartment was smaller than this basement here, right? Um, and my mother used to say, Little Harold, take that horn outside. <laughs> so I used to go outside in front of the apartment building and practice. Of course, the, the sound would just bounce off the wall and all that, off the buildings. And the neighbors were like, Little Harold, shut up that noise. <laughs> and Miss Wanda, who came to my, uh, came to my uh, CD release party, I was surprised, man. And she bought the... Uh, Miss Roney with her, but she was the main one. She would be slamming the window down, man. All, all I hear was, Little Harold, shut up that music, that, that got music. And then all of a sudden, shoot, the window comes slamming down. But guess what? I'm a kid. I don't know. I don't care. I keep practicing because I'm going to make this chance band. You hear me? At that time, I, I'm, I'm going to play for chance band. I'm, I'm going to practice. And then when they told me I couldn't do that anymore, I would just go in the woods out back. All the way up to the diamond and just be practicing. Take my horn up there, practice all day. So yeah, man, that, I wanted to be in Chance Band. To me, we were just as good as any other band out there. We had very good players at every position. So that's how I got to Chance. That, that's how I got there. So yeah, man. So, Take I, it to the top. Right, so, so how I started playing jazz and learning all about jazz, um, well, first of all, it was a little bit in my household because my father had jazz records. He didn't have the really heavy hitters, right? He had the West Montgomery's, the Lee Morgans, and all that. Uh, so, but at that time, I wasn't listening to that. I was listening to, to R and B. How I learned jazz is that um, at at Duke Ellington, w Wallace Roney impressed me so much that I just wanted to learn how to play jazz at that time. And my Wallace. Wallace Roney is a trumpeter. Well, he's deceased now. Jazz trumpeter um, who, who, who attended Duke Ellington. He, he's played all over the world. He's on the stage with Miles Davis. He done played with all the greats. Um, um, Plastic Soul, but 
uh, at that time, I wanted to, to learn jazz based on what they, they did at, at that showcase. But the next year, I, I made the audition, and then they shut down the jazz studies program at uh, Duke Ellington. For some reason, I don't know why, we were playing all classical. But be that as it may, that was a blessing for me because, um, of course, I was playing go-go already. And I wanted to play jazz, but they didn't have a jazz teacher up, up, up at Duke Ellington after my 10th grade year, right? So um, I was like, well, I have to play classical music now, right? But I still had that, that, that yearning to learn how to play jazz. So during my high school y years, um, there was a guy named Webster Young. Look him up, Webster Young, great jazz uh, trumpeter and instructor. And also, um, during that time at UDC, there was a guy named Calvin Jones on trombone. He was the director of the music department there. So I studied with Webster Young. I studied with Calvin Jones. That's where I got my jazz chops from. Um, you had to, even at Duke Ellington, you had to know, take the A train. That was one of Duke Ellington's famous songs, right? Um, but I learned how to play jazz and the music and the language and things like that with Webster Young and uh, Calvin Jones. Um, of course, that's just school, though. Now, in the street, I hooked up with a guy named DeAndre Howard, trumpeter. He was playing over there at Moore's Peace and Love. And the way that he handled that crowd, the way he played, I took to him and learned everything that he was doing, I was trying to do at the same time. And if you look at my band now, it's set up just like he had his band set up. Uh, as I got older, you know, real slick with it, I started going to check out Marshall Keys um, up at Tacoma Station. You know, they had all the heavy hitters, uh, Federico Pena and, and uh, Mark Prince, all the heavy hitters right, right there, still playing jazz. So, but those were my main influence early was Calvin Jones and Webster Young. Study with Webster Young on 16th Street. Study with Calvin Jones at UDC. So um, the, the folks who, the musicians who um, inspired me uh, comes from three, four different genres, from jazz, R&B, funk, of course, go-go. Uh, but my journey from uh, jazz, my inspiration from jazz, uh, started out with Miles Davis. Uh, I, I saw an album, um, you know, back when they had record stores. <laughs> I, I saw an album with a, a photograph of him with a suit on and a polka dot tie. I thought it was so cool. I bought it. And, and that, that, that album was too advanced for me at that time. Um, I caught up later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that one inspired me. I, I tried to learn all of Miles Davis solos. I, I had a, a lot of John Coltrane. Everything at, at that time was about Miles Davis and his band, uh, Cannonball Atlee. Of course, Duke Ellington. Uh, uh, you know, later on, Calvin Jones had us listening to Count Basie, not so much Duke Ellington. Count Basie was more of, of the junkyard <laughs> to go-go, <laughs> right? They were, they were wild. So, um, yeah, so I was inspired by Miles Davis, but then, of, of course, as you get older, you want to branch out and try to find yourself. So I started listening to Thad Jones on trumpet. I started uh, listening to Wes Montgomery. Uh, Stevie Wonder, Shaka Khan, I listened to so many different, uh, plus with my go-go roots, right? That stayed with me all the time, um, but learning this music, you gotta listen to uh, everything that you can. And then somehow you'll find yourself from all of your influences, right? Um, like as an older guy like me, like 10 years ago, I just got hip to, uh, to uh, Joe Henderson, tennis saxophone player. Man, I'm like, whoa, how I miss him. But there's so many uh, uh, jazz players and, and R&B, like Stevie Wonder, man, was my man. Uh, um, you know, Luther Vandross, all, all these people. Like, But uh, definitely started with Go-Go first, then it moved up to jazz, because I, I, I just wanted to be hip, you know, um, trying to learn this music. But you have to listen to I had to listen to many different artists uh, coming up trying to learn this, this music called jazz. Of course, there's no, way, no better way to learn this music 
is uh, to go. And Marshall Keys and uh, DeAndre Howard, Selena McDay, Curtis Pope, all these DC legends, uh, they were playing so much horn and so much jazz. I would co go to the uh, club, um, especially at Tacoma Station. I went in there with a, t a tape recorder. I went in there and taped them. And I would go home and learn their, their, their licks, how they were playing. I always had a tape recorder going to see um, DeAndre Howard. You know, he played a lot of jazz licks, a whole lot of horn. Yeah, so doing this music, you definitely got to go listen to everybody. I'm, I'm influenced by so much, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. I, I'll turn on some classical. That's got to be in my music. But if you listen closely, the root is go-go. The root of what I do is go-go. Now, thank goodness I, can, I came out the closet, <laughs> you know, when we had this new movement. Um, uh, but before then, a lot of folks wasn't trying to have it and all that. Sometimes I would make a selfish single and just do it anyway. Um, of course, that's what Chuck Brown was doing. Chuck Brown was doing jazz and putting a go-go beat behind it. Um, at that time, at that young age, I, I didn't know. The only thing I knew he played was Take the A-Train. But most of his stuff was come, coming from jazz. So, yeah, uh, jazz has been my inspiration. Still is. I still listen to jazz today. I, I keep Miles Davis in my car now. Um, but I, I'm, I'm more diverse now. It's not just all Miles Davis. I listen to all kind of Roy Hargrove. I'm playing his licks on some of my singles today. And he's way younger than me. <laughs> you know, of course, Wallace Roney. Yeah. Bruce Williams, my buddy who also went to UDC, studied under Calvin Jones. He's so big. Mark Curry. I listen to everybody. And they all influence me. So 1985, I left Chance Band. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but I, I know I was away from DC. Uh, I think I went to New Orleans um, to try to learn uh, down there. I think that's what I was doing. I, I just can't remember, but uh, came back home uh, within a year and uh, come to find out Chance Band had broken up and uh, I was looking for another band to play with. I had guys calling me saying, hey man, you wanna play with us, you wanna play with us? So I started playing with these kind of, you know, young bands. Um, uh, a band called Quality, they were the first ones to call me and I believe Jam and Jeff was with that band at that time. And he was a little nervous. I, I used to pump him up all the time, but I didn't stay with them for long. I don't think I stayed with them but about a, a, a year. And then I would go around to other groups. I can't call them out. But the most uh, prominent group at, at that time uh, was uh, Pure Elegance. David Powell was the leader of Pure Elegance. And um, I was the trumpet player for seven years with uh, Pure Elegance. Um, that was a great time because we were learning and innovating, coming up with originals and playing around town and things like that. David Powell was great, man, you know. Um, uh, we had great musicians in our band, too. After, after that, uh, I and went... Some of the musicians? Some of the musicians were uh, David Powell, Go-Go uh, Go Money. Go-Go Money was in our band. And any musicians they played? Go-Go Money played percussion. Um, Aaron Banks played bass, um, uh, Bam Bam, Bam Bam played drums, uh, man, I'm drawing a blank right now, but man, they're going to kill me. I know they're going to kill me. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I can't recall everybody. Um, yeah, uh, I can't recall everybody, so, you know, hopefully we can get that in the notes somewhere. Um, after that, after that, uh, I got a call from um, Funk with, with proper utensils. You know, I played with him for a very, very short time. I don't think I even made it to the stage, but uh, he called me in and we were rehearsing all the time over Keith Holmes, who was another trumpet player. Keith Holmes played trumpet um, up at UDC. We, we rehearsed at his basement, down in his basement. Uh, and I would, um, it was woodshed, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would, um, I would learn all the parts and all that, and uh, I would get bored with the parts, and I would go into another room and practice on some jazz stuff. Um, uh, battle, battle on keyboards was the M 
M um, M D. He didn't take too kindly of, of me, you know, leaving the rehearsal, or going to another room because they was messing around a whole lot too. So, but I would play their horn lines and all that. I would um, um, actually whisper in in Funk's ear ideas to play while the band was going. You know, I did a lot of things like that. Uh, but anyway, um, here comes Benny. Now I know Funk and Benny real tight, and me and Benny tight too, right? Um, but I, I didn't know Benny was coming. Godfather was in that band too. Um, you know, we cool too. But uh, I taught Benny all the horn lines. I knew what that meant. I, that meant that I was getting ready to get 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 cut. But um, Funk and Benny are, are like family, so I wasn't heard about that. Um, after that, I went with uh, I went with Chuck. Chuck called me, and we um, I did a show with him. That was a short time. Um, uh, David Rudd was was the tenor tenor guy. Uh, I think Kiko was on drums. Uh, uh, Louis Oxley on keyboards. That's what all, all I remember. But at, at that time, Chuck uh, audience was a little little low. Um, Glenn Glenn Ellis on on bass um, was there. Um, I just don't remember. That was a long 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 time ago. But uh, uh, after that, uh, Chuck was like. Um, it, it wasn't many uh, participants there, so the crowd was was light, and Chuck just couldn't afford it. I was like, "Well, man, I, I, look, I, I got to go," because uh, at that same time, I was also still at um, at UDC playing with Calvin Jones. Um, but uh, I ran into him at Tacoma Station. He was playing up there, and uh, you know, we sat at the bar discussing. And I, and I told him, I, I said, "Chuck." Um, I'm gonna start my own band, and he looked under his glass, over his glass, like this. He said, "Son, you in a world of trouble." <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know what he meant by that, but uh, I found out later. Being a band leader is not a joke. Being a band leader is not a joke. Man, son, you can't play with that line. Don't play with that line. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> my my influence. Uh, I didn't want to go back to the to. to well, let's start all over. So what motivated me to start my own band was because I just didn't want to go back to the, the regular go-go scenes and all that and regular bands. Uh, I, I wanted to try something new that I, I was doing. Really, it really wasn't new because um, Chuck Brown had already done it. I was going to do a, 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 a uh, instrumental version of what Chuck Brown was doing. Um, but I, I would add more slick songs, more uh, slick jazz tunes and, and, and things like that. But I wanted to, to put together a band of my own and I did that. I, I, I modeled, um, as I said earlier, uh, off of DeAndre Howard. He had uh, a conga, bass drums, guitar, keyboard and him. No saxophone. No vocals, no vocalists, anything. But I, I, I have played with them. Sometimes contracts call for that. I would add them and all that. But primarily, I formed my own band so that I can experiment with this new music that I'm, I've been doing. Somebody told me it was called pocket jazz. And I was like, OK, that's what you call it? <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll roll with it. So uh, that, that is what uh, motivated me. I wanted to start my own band, and I did. I've been playing with these guys now, man. Some of them, 30 years, you know, 25, 30 years. Um, uh, three of them from UDC, you know. Uh, others, I like to use young guys on the drums, you know, Redfoots, Derek Redfoots on drums most of the time because he can give me the R&B funk, and you know he can give me the go-go, so yeah. That's why I wanted to start my own band because I said, well, at my age, I'm like, man, look here, I might as well try something new, try to try to do something that I wanted to do as, as uh, and, and not a side man to somebody else's direction. Well, my ver uh, very first recorded piece, uh, b believe it or not, are on PA tapes, <laughs> failed attempts to, to put my ideas uh, uh, down on wax back then. It, it, it just I, I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the money. Took sh shortcuts and things like that. Um, but in the past 15 years, I've, I've been able to put out 
quality work. My very first one under my name uh, was Daddy's Groove. That, that's the uh, title track to that EP. Um, and I, I, I played a couple of, of standards on there and, and uh, originals. Daddy's Groove is about my daughter who uh, is the groove of my life. <laughs> yes, Zoe. Um, yeah, but that, that, that CD got a lot of love on the radio, especially at WHUR. I mean, they played three, three out of the five songs on the EP and kept it in rotation. I was surprised, but uh, they also gave me an interview and all that, man. It, it, that was a great time. That, was, that, that album um, was my very first. And after that, I, I did some singles uh, just to you know, stay busy. Um, those, those were very pop popular. I did uh, Impressions, Go-Go Perspective, from a Go-Go Perspective. Um, I did All Blues. That still gets spinning today. That was, oh man, that was 10 years ago. Still spinning today on stations that I, I wouldn't expect to play them, but uh, yeah. Um, then from there, I did uh, a, a, a single with, with Stinky Dink called Blow Your Horn, you know, rap jazz, go-go, R&B type of thing. Um, that was popular as well. Uh, but after that, I went on to my masterpiece, Akabin, right? Some people call it a Coban. It, it, it means war horn. That's a 12-track uh, CD that's been around the world, still spinning around the world. Got a lot of love, a lot of articles, a, a, a lot of reviews, uh, sold a lot of CDs. Uh, it, it is my baby. Um, Akabin, I wrote that song because I was upset that they murdered Sandra Bland and I wrote a, psych, a, a, a fight song and that was my fight song. If you listen to it carefully, it's a lot of timbales in there from the go-go, right? A lot of timbales in there, that's the fight. And at the end, we, we take up, pick up our bodies and we go back to the village. Yeah, but there's a lot of nice songs on there. Check it out. Go to HerlLittle.com and check out, check out my music, man. Buy it. If you don't like it, you get your money back. That's how, how proud I am about it. It's, it is something. After, after a, a Coleman, I mean, that was a two, two and a half year run. So I was getting bored again and put out some more music. I did uh, a version of Sade's song, Stronger Than Pride. That's nice. Um, I did Feel Like Making Love, did videos, I did music videos and all that. And uh, right now, I am working my, on my next single that's going to drop. Well, I can't even say when it's going to drop. It was supposed to drop in October, I mean in August. So I'm still working on it. It's finished. Just got to get it mixed and mastered. So yeah, that's my next move. That, that's the music I have as up today. I've been... Uh, told that my music is, is this thing called pocket jazz, um, which I, I, I've heard that before. I, I think the band uh, Subtle Thoughts was playing some ver version of that, but recently people have been calling me the pocket jazz master. And I was like, whoa, what pocket jazz master? That is outstanding. Uh, I'll run with that. I am the pocket jazz master because of my music and, and my style. It's mostly in instrumental. Um, and it's, it, it, it hasn't been done. And I'm the only one out there doing it right now. So that makes me the Pocket Jazz Master. So the way that you can get in touch with me, the Pocket Jazz Master, Harold Little, the Pocket Jazz Master, is, is to visit my website. All of my music, my videos, my bio, my, my every, if, if you want to book the band, everything is at haroldlittle.com. Um, all my music, all the free downloads, we got free downloads there. Uh, my, my press kit, everything you need, everything about it. If you want to hire the band, there's a tab to book the band there. Everything is right there for you. Uh, just go to haroldlittle.com. And if you want to get to me through all my social media, just go to haroldlittle.com and I got all of my social media uh, uh, links right there on, on the first page. So yeah, the Pocket Jazz Master. Check me out.